Time to catch up with UTRGV women's basketball. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and this is the head coach of the UTRGV women's basketball team, the one and only Larry Tidwell. Jonah, this is going to be a, a tough show to do, but we're going to do it. We're going to be positive and things along that line. Uh, heartbreaking loss. You know, we've lost two conference games at home in a row with in front of a lot of people, you know, 1,700 on Saturday and I guess 1,300 on the previous previous week and even 1,100 on the game before that. The last three games, 1,100, 1,300, 1,700. That's, that's pretty good crowds and we do appreciate the people of the Valley, of our campus, all around of coming out and supporting us and um, came up a little bit short against a very good New Mexico State team. Credit to Mark Trek and, and his team there, I think now 19-3, and three, something yeah. along that line. Leading the league at 7-0, and we're 5-2. and two. We're in second place. We have a game lead on Grand Canyon and a two-game lead on Utah Valley, which we have coming up real soon, and also Seattle and, and Cal State Bakersfield in that category. So we've got some big games coming up, but let's talk a little bit about the New Mexico State game. Well, you know, it was a 68-57 loss to the Aggies, and uh, when you look at that game, uh, there were definitely some positives. You know, you were a little short in the front court, but Hilder Bjork Karchin's daughter, Raquel Preston, both st stepped up pretty big. They did. Uh, Hilder gets down there and battles. You know, I've had Hilder at a three, four, and a five uh, with our injury situation right now. Looks like she's going to move inside to a five. She had a double double. She had 12 points. She had 11 rebounds. You know, she went to the line eight times, which yeah. uh, equates to she probably got in around 13 or 14 shots from the field the other night. That's a good balance because her and, and, and uh, Raquel Preston, you know, 6'11 from the field, shot it well, 5'5 five five from the line. She's getting to the line, 17 points, 7 rebounds. And then uh, Shantae Goff is just battling. She played 40 minutes, Jonah, and had one turnover. And um, so those, those three right there, Carson's daughter, Preston, and Goff, really stepped up and played, played huge and played a lot of minutes. Goff with the 40 minutes is a, a great point. Now that's the fifth time in seven conference games she's played all 40 minutes. Well, she's uh, hard to take out. She's in a, a really good athlete. She's in great shape. Uh, we, we try to rest her when we can, but right now everything's been so close. We haven't been resting her, but we use all of our timeouts. And then, you know, with all the different timeouts we have with our media and things on that line, she gets some pretty good breaks. So with her being in uh, just ultimate shape, I think she's able to handle this. Uh, she strikes me as the kind of person that wouldn't uh, want to come out of a game, even if you asked her. Yeah, uh, I cannot remember any time this year where she wanted to come out. And, you know, she's still battling a little bit of a, a sore ankle. You know, Rock is playing with uh, a bad knee that's inflamed that we, we treat all the time. And then uh, Carson's daughter is just banging. Oh, my gosh, she's banging inside. She's got a little bit of a lower back injury. So... We have got people stepping up. You know, Lele Havili just back from a, from a, a ACL tear before she got here. And then even Laura Van Tilburg is still having trouble with a foot problem that she battles through. So it's a grind, Bernie. I mean, you can go on and on and on, but we don't have any excuses. We just, the next person's got to step up, and that's what we plan on doing. Yeah, you got Bernice Peters back in that game. How great was it to be able to see her back on the court? It, it was, and, and she's not quite back at game speed the way she was playing. Uh, she's a great shooter, and she, she didn't have a good night shooting. But, gosh, she played hard on defense. She got after it. We did a few adjustments. She made adjustments. Has a great passion for the game. Uh, at all times during this game, you had some freshmen in the backcourt, on the court. Mm -hmm. Is it gr great to be able to see all those freshmen contributing? Well, I tell you, um, you know, they're out there getting after it. Hyman, Turk, and Burning. I mean, they are making contributions uh, that's just unbelievable. And they're playing smart. Had a few turnovers that we didn't need to have, but that'll come from experience. But you like to see them grow, but, but they're stepping up. You know, Raquel's been playing, Rock's been playing the three all year. But she had to move to the four. Hilda moved to the five, you know, when we got in foul trouble. And, and then we decided we had to press to catch up. And... Uh, I'm looking at a lineup this week of uh, Goff at the point, Bernie at the two, Nichelle Hyman at the three, Rock at the four, Hilder at the five. Hmm. And we're going to be, uh, become a little bit more of an up-tempo team and try to get on the scoreboard through our press and through defensive pressure. 
It's a very athletic lineup that you'd have out there. And, you know, I know at times of the season you've gone with that full court press, especially uh, earlier in the season, and uh, we've seen how it can lead to turnovers. Yeah, it, it does. And, you know, and not having Mary Savoy, you know, she helps with our press a lot. Anushka Maldonado helps with our press a lot. And I like to see her grow. I mean, she's like having a coach on the floor, you know, defensively for us, and she's having back spasms, and we don't know exactly when that's going to turn loose and let her operate freely. And so we'll just put the ones out there that we have healthy. And, and, and you got to look at um, Asika Kusik stepping up. you got to look at Lele Havili stepping up. you got to look at Laura Van Tilburg stepping up. Jada Bennett's back full speed because she's been out with knee problems. And you got to keep looking at that bench, you know, at Angie Villarreal. I mean, Mitch, uh, Tristan Murphy. I mean, you got to be ready. Everybody's got to be ready to dig in. You know, much was made about how this was the rematch of the, the WAC Tournament Championship game. But it's funny because when I looked at the teams on the court, you know, New Mexico State has a different starting lineup despite having a lot of players back, and they use the rotation differently. You know, you return all of three players who played in the championship game last year, right. uh, you know, in Preston Goff and Karchin's daughter. So were, were you looking at it that way, or was it more like just a battle between the top two teams? In the uh, a battle between the top two teams. You know, the, we appreciate everything that – that is done, you know, with Sarah and uh, Cara Lara and people working in the marketing department to help promote this game, get it out there. Um, and we had, we've had nice crowds. Our student body came out. And again, I can't say enough about our band, our pep band, our dance team, our cheerleaders. Everything's first class, and we just didn't finish. And we got to get better. And like I said. We are banged up. We've got people out, but no excuses. Next man up. It's a great opportunity for somebody to step up. That's the way I see it. You know, it's sort of like the old, uh, uh, Lou Gehrig story. You know, yeah. Wally Pip. You know, Wally Pip uh, wasn't feeling good that day, and they put Lou Gehrig in the lineup for the Yankees. And what, 1,845 <laughs> games later, he finally <laughs> retired. So, so uh, yeah, we gotta have some Lou Gehrig step up for us and. That's what's great about college sports. They always can do that. Well, now the schedule turns over a little bit. You had five of your first seven at home, which means five of your remaining seven in the regular season on the road. Well, we're definitely road warriors. Yeah. Uh, we've been all over the country this year, from New York to California and everywhere in between. <laughs> we played Big 12 schools. We played Big West. We played, you know, just schools that, uh, ACC schools, I mean, we're ready. The, the road is sometimes good for us. It, it helps us really lock in and focus and concentrate. I know we're going to play at Utah Valley State on a Thursday at 11 a.m. in the morning. It's a kid's day. They're going to have a big crowd out for that. But then again, you're going to turn around and you're going to look at uh, playing a much improved Grand Canyon team who's really playing well right now. Uh, them and New Mexico State are probably playing the two best in the league right now. So we got to get our mojo back and see if we can't get two on the road. You know, it's funny you mentioned Grand Canyon. They, they beat Seattle at Seattle yesterday, and they've had, you know, right after uh, you held them to 28 points, they only lost to New Mexico State by two in right. Las Cruces. So uh, have you had to – have you been able to watch the game that you played against them or, or for scouting, or have you had to watch these other games to see the new Grand we, Canyon? What, what we're doing is we've watched – I'm locked in on Utah Valley, and, and I'll occasionally I'll peek at the Utah Valley – uh, Grand Canyon game, mm -hmm. but I, I'm so locked in on Utah Valley. That's the one that's next on our schedule, so that's one we're preparing for, and that's what we're after, is Utah Valley, the Wolverine. Because it's a noon game, you get a little more time in between games on the road than you normally get. Do you think that'll help in the recovery and the travel? Uh, we'll see. Um, you know, you'll have about six or seven extra hours, and we'll have to do it something productive with it, but I think we'll be fine. Well, Utah Valley is next. It's at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, noon Central Time, and that's on Thursday, followed by Grand Canyon on Saturday, 5 o'clock Central Time, and we'll have links to the live broadcast, live stats, and everything else you could possibly want up at GoUTRGV.com. He's Larry Tidwell. He's the head coach of the UTRGV women's basketball team. This is John Goldberg, media relations guru for UTRGV women's basketball. Thanks, Jack. We got those of you